Hello everyone, it's Amy, and welcome back for week 82 of the new Build Your Stash and Craft. So for this week, we picked up this packet of watercolor pencils from the Dollar Tree. These are not just plain colored pencils, they are watercolor pencils. And, um, and also, I did not tell you to pick up this two-pack of water brushes, but I had them here, and I so I want you to put these on your list for the next time you go. You don't have to have them right now. Um, regular paint brushes will work just fine, but these are nice to use. And also, if you want to travel with this kit, because to me, watercolor pencils are a really nice thing to take with you when you travel. You need your pencils, you need water, you need a brush, you need a palette, and something to paint on, and a little bit of paper towel. So you can take a brush and put it in with your pencils. Usually I take one pencil out. You have a little bit of room in there, but not enough. But usually if you take out one, you can put a, a brush in there of some sort. Um, if you have the watercolor um, brushes, you can fill that with water. So you will have your water, you will have your brushes. I use the top of the packet as a palette if I don't have something to use as a palette. Keep it in the middle where you're not going to take any chances of getting water down into um, your set of pencils. But So that's really all you need and then something to paint on. So um, that's why these are nice to have and I do just like to use them because it's just handy with the water inside the brush. So pick those up. I did take them, I put that onto our list for this week. So that means that we will have $65.65 in our bank. And, um, and I wanted to tell you about these also. They, I was trying to unscrew it, trying to unscrew it, and I couldn't get it to unscrew. I mean, I even tried it with a pair of pliers. They unscrew backwards. So they unscrew the opposite way that you would expect them to, or at least that I would expect them to. Fill them with water and then go ahead and screw them back on again. Maybe it's because of which portion I was trying to unscrew. Maybe that's my problem. Anyways, so we're going to put these on our list also. Alrighty, now I did pull out the, um, the color book that we bought um, earlier in the series. And I just went through and I found a nice, very busy page. These are all actually quite busy. Most of these are. And I find that to do a whole coloring page a lot of times is very daunting. Um, and it is something that you can, you know, start and work on for a long time. Um, but if you kind of just want to get in and do a project and have it complete, trying to do a whole page is a little bit difficult. So what I did was because a lot of times, even once they're colored, you could frame them, but normally I cut them up and use them. So I went ahead and I cut it up ahead of time. So I did a couple of ATCs, two and a half by three and a half is an ATC, which is artist trading card. And I did a couple of bookmarks and I did a long one that could be used for a belly band in a journal. And I did a three by five for um, a journaling card. So um, I cut it up ahead of time so that I could do one piece, get it finished, and actually feel like I had accomplished something. And especially since I usually cut them out anyways. So we have our paper now, and we have our pencils, and we have our water, so we are good to start. Now there are different ways that you can use watercolor pencil. I love watercolor pencils, and I like ink tents, which ink tents pencils um, are quite expensive, and they are kind of like a liquid ink when you get them wet. Uh, but very, very vibrant. Um, but I like the watercolor pencils, even though watercolor itself is not a big one on my list. Watercolor in a palette or, um, or in tubes. For some reason, watercolor color is not my favorite paint in that form. But as pencils, I love watercolor pencils. So there are different ways to use them. You can use them just as a pencil. And I am going to, can't, we're not super close, but hopefully you can just see how this turns out. Um, so you can just go in and just color just like you would with a regular colored pencil. 
and you can stop right there if you like to. Now, I've always been a little bit afraid of, what if my page got wet um, later on if I only used it as a, as a colored pencil? But I've never had a problem, so I really don't know. Um, but yeah, you just go in, you can color it just like you would with any other colored pencil. And there you go. And that looks good. So, but then you can take your, take a paintbrush, get it wet, and you don't want a whole ton of water on here. And then you're just going to, with your wet paintbrush, get that pigment wet and just paint it around. Just like when we were little kids and they had the pages with the little dots and all you needed was a paintbrush and water and you could turn that picture into a colored picture. I actually did try that on, on a coloring book with watercolor pencils, just putting dots all over it, but the dots don't really disappear. Um, so it wasn't as as exciting as when I was a kid. So there we go, now we have that all blended in. Now if you want, you can come in with another color. And because this is actually still wet, that will even help that color blend off of your pencil. It will make it come off even darker because it's wetting the tip of this pencil. You could leave it like that, or you could go in again with your brush making sure that it's not super, super wet. And just kind of blend that out a little bit to just give yourself a little bit of detail. And then I've got a little bit on the end of my paintbrush, so if I wanted to go in and put some light color out here on the edge, I can do that. But there's not much on there. so. Then the other way that you can do it, and this is going to give you a really dark color, is straight to pencil, which is one of my favorite ways to use the watercolor pencils. I'm going to come in and I am going to just tap off my brush. I'm not going to wipe it off and I'm going to go on to this dark green here. And basically I'm just going to pull the color right off the lead of that pencil. And you sharpen these just like you would sharp a, sharpen a regular pencil when the lead gets too far down. And then I'm just gonna take that darker color and put it here around the edge. But that is the way that I love to use the watercolor pencils. I love to just go in and use my brush and pull the color right from the pencil and put it right straight to paper. So you can color and then get it wet, or you can pull the color with your brush. You can go ahead and take your actual lead and just dip it in the water. Oops, I really pushed on the bottom there. Um, just dip it in your water, shake it off good, and then you can use that to color. It's again going to give you a much more, a much deeper color. So we'll just put this on here. And even though we had gone from the other side straight to the lead uh, with the paintbrush, that made it dark. Now with the wet, now my um, lead has dried, so I'm going to put it back in there and again, tap it off real well. And it kind of has the feel of um, like lipstick when you get the, when you get the lead wet and put it to the paper. That's kind of what it reminds me of. And so, see, coming straight from the lead, it's much darker than coming straight with your brush right to the lead. And then it's even darker, that's even darker than 
coloring first and then putting the water on it. So each way gets you just a little bit of a different color. I'm going to wipe, I'm going to just roll this across my paper towel. That's a lot of color right there actually, but um, I don't want to put this back in my packet being that wet. And when I am done using them, I said I like I like to use them with the paintbrush right straight to the lead. When I'm all done, I leave them like this and let them kind of dry out a bit before I stick them back in and close up the packet. So let's say we want to make this leave a little bit orange and red. Maybe we should do that like down in here. So again, like I said, my favorite way to do it is just let's use the watercolor. And so this um, tip usually is always just kind of wet. You can give it a squeeze and kind of tap off the water and then go in and we'll grab a little bit of that red and you just rub it across the lead. Now when this flips off the end of your pencil, a lot of times it leaves little flecks of color. And so you wanna make sure that you do have a work surface underneath that is, um, that you protect your work surface. So I'll just put that red in there and then I'm going to, because I had some water on there, I'm going to kind of give that a squeeze. And I can also do it in there. But I want that red off before I get to the orange. And I'm just going to go on to here. Picking up that color. And then I'm going to just kind of blend from the lighter color, which to me is the orange, down into the red. So just kind of blend those together a little bit. And if you think that, oh, there's like a line there that I don't like, pick up just a touch of water and blend that area that you don't like with that water. And that will blend it together even better. And whenever you're blending, you should always blend from lightest to darkest to get the best blend. If you go dark to light, it does still blend, but a lot of times that dark will draw all the way out to the end, and um, you'll kind of lose your light color. Just a little bit more orange, because I'm really running out. And I don't really squeeze this pen much, except like right when I first start, I'll squeeze it onto my palette. So there we go, a little fall leaf there. And again, if I don't like how dark that red is, I could go in and just move it around a little bit. It does move very well. And I was surprised these colored pencils really are pretty good. They, I was, I thought that the pigment might be really, really not there, but um, it does. It has a nice colored pigment to it. So, so you can use your watercolor pencils by coloring and getting them wet. You can use your watercolor pencils by using a wet brush and pulling the water off of the colored pencil itself. You can get the colored pencil wet and color with it that way. You can even get the colored pencil wet and color on a wet piece of paper, which will really give you a really deep, um, a deep color. So let's put, we'll get this wet right here. And then I'll show you also how to just make a watercolor wash, which is different than the coloring. Okay, so let's make that one. Let's, let's do it in yellow. So I'm gonna take my color, and if your water gets very dirty, you don't wanna put your pencils in there. This is still really, really clean because I just got it, but I normally do have clean water that I just dip my pencils in or more more um, water to put on my palette or something. So, but now, now my pencil is wet and my paper is wet. So this is going to even make it a deeper color and it also makes that yellow really kind of soak into that paper a little bit faster to really make that color um, saturated into your paper in case you decide to like lift it off a little bit. If you have way too much water, you can just take your paper towel and just tap it on there and it will 
lift up the color, but if it's really, really wet and it's not saturated, like going straight from the pencil, wet pencil onto the paper, it will pick up even more and sometimes you'll almost wind up right back to your white paper, which at times works good because at times that might be exactly what you're looking for. But if you take it this way, see it's still very saturated on that paper. Now that's a little bit damp already, and my orange one's a little bit damp from me pulling some, some color. So I could come in here and kind of put a little of this orange in, and it's going on really nicely, which with a little bit of a deeper color than if it had everything had been dry. And then just a little bit of water, not too much and just spread that out. Now I'm spreading from the darker into the lighter just because I'm just doing some little highlights there. If you have something you really don't like, the more water you put on it, being careful not to use too much, but you can kind of take things off with your water. And so there we go. So that's like a wet, um, wet onto wet and dry onto it. So, and then the other thing is, is that I like to use a wash at times. And I usually use a wash for the background. So I take color and I put it in with some water. So that was red water, but that was okay with me. I'm just gonna get some of this color and even though it looks quite dark on your palette for the wash, um, depending on how much water is there, you do wind up needing um, quite a bit of color. Put some more water right there, and we'll put a little bit of this red. And I could just take that, that lead and stick it right in the water right there to pull it off. I just usually do it this way. All right, now, if you take wet, like a puddle of your color, and you put it on your paper here. So we'll just put this puddle of red right here. So, and then you try and get it to run. It doesn't really want to move very much because dry paper stops your watercolor from running. It also stops it from spreading. So if you keep your paper around where you're painting dry, it, you're not gonna have it bleed much because your paper is dry and it watercolors, the water doesn't like the dry paper. Now, if I have, if I go ahead and make the paper wet, let's go right here. Oops, I don't know why I'm putting a puddle. Okay, so I'm gonna wet this. Right to there. Then I'll take this orange, which is gonna be very light now because I put the water on there first. So I'm gonna put the orange there. See, it ran right down to, right where I stopped putting the water. The red kind of ran down to the edge of the page, but they're not touching right there because there was no water there. So you can take it and drag it out to where you want it. And now it's gonna go that way because we made a little wet river right there. And so now they'll run together. And that's how I like to do my washes. I like to mix colors for a wash, but see, okay, now we got that heavy enough and I moved it fast enough that it did run down the paper. But that's very hard to get it to do that. It normally stops. So that was just something I just wanted to show you. And then you can just go in there and, and w put that wash right up to the edge of whatever you have already colored. I usually do it after I'm done. So you could actually... Never done it beforehand, but I don't know why you couldn't. So, but I just take that in and then I don't have, I have a problem with the white backgrounds, which a lot of people do. The white is just such a stark color. Now, some people, they love the white backgrounds. So that is all, it's all just up to whatever is your taste when the backgrounds, you know, however you want to do your background. 
So we're going to do it like that. And then I'm going to think I want to put just a little bit of maybe purple in there. So I'm going to grab a little bit, but I want it to be wet. And I'm just going to put that on there and just kind of let that mix in a little bit. I don't want those colors to totally blend, so I'm just going to like leave it right there. Take some of this orange with the purple. I'm going to take a little bit more of that darker purple and stick it in there. Wherever you let it pool, it will dry a little darker than where it is. It's going to dry kind of the way that you see it when it's sitting there. So if you have a pool of color, you're going to wind up with color in that area. And so I just like to get my backgrounds however I want them. And then you let it dry. And then this is not watercolor paper. This is just regular coloring book paper. So it is warping and that's okay. When you're done, stick it in a book and you know, flatten it out. And, um, but see, I just love the way that you can do the background like that and it gets rid of that stark white. And to me, it just looks so nice that way. So here's, here is one that I did. Mostly I did this, this is just a, it's, it's a cardstock. It's not watercolor paper. Um, but it did not warp too much. It's a little warped and I can stick it in a book and it'll be fine. But we've got the different, I've got some just backgrounds. I usually do an area at a time. Sometimes if I have a large bit like this, because I like to see a little bit of difference. We've got, this is where I started. And then I added another layer here. And then I came this way. Then I did this here and then this over here and then this separately. So, and then I kind of did this and filled in here. So, you know, just to me, I can actually see those differences on there, and yet they're not like bold and in your face because they're just a wash in the background. These are some drips where I put a whole puddle of water there and then just kind of pulled just a little bit of water down here and then tipped it up and let it run. And, you know, it stopped wherever I stopped the water. So I like to do that. I think that that's a nice look on certain certain pieces of paper. Um, some of this was actually colored and then wet, but most of it was, I think this end was colored and then wet, and then most of the rest of it was um, straight from, I used the water brush, and I just went straight from the, uh, what is it, pencil, right straight to my paper. And if you find that a color is too light, or if it's really, really wet, and you wanna blot it off, and you do, and then, then you think it's too light, you just go back in when you're done, and just add a little bit of color. If you wanna add a little highlight somewhere or whatever you wanna do, you just go in and you just add the color until you decide it looks the way that you want it to look. Maybe I wanna like kinda of go down into that green just a little bit. Of course, green and brown kinda of make mud, but. So that is watercolor pencils. And that's why I said, you know, they're nice to have for your stash because they are kind of nice to just grab and go. And like I said, normally, because I don't normally use black with watercolor, I'll normally take out one of the darker colors. That's a dark gray. But I'm not, oh, there's the black right there. I normally take out the black. That's me because I don't care for it. But there's, in this set especially, there are so many colors um, that taking out a red or a or a yellow there's more than one of all of them I'm just going to make sure that my the tip of my brush is clean just click that on there and then that can go right with the others and by the looks of this set I'm going to need to take out two So now I have my water brush, I have my colors, because it's a plastic container, and some of them come in metal containers, whatever they come in, um, but because it's plastic, I can use this. If it was metal, I could use it as a, as a palette. So I take this with me, I have some paper, and I am good to go to just have something to do. And like I said, you could even take some of these smaller ones and just slide them into that one won't fit but you could even just take a couple of these and slide them in there so that you'll have them with you so that you'll have something to do and you'll only have just this 
this is what you need to take and you're good to go. Um, if you're on the road, probably, maybe, you might have some napkins in your car, which would work just fine. You just need something that you can um, dab your brush on. But if not, take a paper towel and wrap it around there and take it with you. So that is what I do with colored pencils. I really like them. I just, I think that they're very enjoyable, very relaxing to just sit and do. It is even something you can sit on the couch and do because you don't have to have a bunch of water. You know, if you have the water brush and you have a, um, a napkin, you can even use the water brush by squeezing it, wiping off your color first and then giving it a couple squeezes and wiping it off. And now you've got a clean brush to go to your next color. So you don't even have to have um, the water with you um, on the couch where it could get spilled. So so that is our watercolor, the way that I play with watercolors. Now, I never say that what I do is the right way because I do things the way that I like to do them. To me, there's not a right way or a wrong way to create something. If you're enjoying making it, you're doing it right because that's, that's the whole point of creating anything. So for next week, what we are going to pick up is some things that you can use for your crafting. So um, so it's kind of a very mixed match of things, but we are going to get this three compartment organizer. This is all from the Dollar Tree. Um, if this is acrylic organizer. Then we have this makeup brush holder that has suction cups on the back. And we are going to get this um, face applicator, which has the little spatulas on each end. And it's, um, what do you call it, silicone. And we will get a, a makeup brush. This is a blending sponge, um, which I think is kind of nice. And then also, because it's going to be for week after next, but why not? Because I saw them. Some crafting scissors, the ones that have a design on them. Any design is fine. Um, I liked the zigzag, so I got these ones. They had like two or three kinds, I think, there. So we've got one, two, three, four. We're getting five things this week. So that is a total of $6.25. Is that right? Yes, $6.25. So we'll add $1.25 to our bank, which then leaves our bank at $66.90. And we'll mess around with some of those next week and one of them even the week after. So thank you very much for stopping by. I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you've never tried watercolor pencils, um, if you think that looks fun, I hope you give it a try. Thanks again. And I appreciate each and every one of you. Bye-bye.